Uh, thank you all for having me here. I'm Megan Eisenberg. I joined MongoDB about seven months ago. It's an open source uh, modern database software company. Uh, and I'm you know, definitely excited to be here. I do think the importance of growth, there's many different factors that build to that. And uh, I'm excited to share that. All right, a little bit about myself. Prior to joining MongoDB, I came from DocuSign. I was there for three and a half years. Uh, we grew from a 150 person company to over 1,200, from 13 million on our platform to over 50 million, from one piece of marketing technology software to 18. Uh, so we did a lot of uh, growth there, certainly. And prior to that, I was at other uh, tech companies. And I do advise for uh, startups, tech startups now, uh, including SpeakEasy. So that's a, a more recent one. And I find I learn a lot uh, around how companies grow and what people are doing and all the new technologies by working with so many different companies. Uh, MongoDB, uh, we do have a, a, an amazing community, over 10 million downloads, a lot of user groups. I mean, I'm just impressed by um, the number of users that worldwide um, get together to talk about using it. And I think the company did the right thing. They built, over the last seven years, an amazing product. It certainly has gone through some growth uh, and maturity. And uh, we're seeing that now by building something that developers love to work on, uh, that now it's my job to come in and help build and add on the brand and market better and, and learn how to deliver a production ready message. So it used to be that the heroes of marketing were the ones that told the great stories, those of um, this gentleman here and his uh, madmen colleagues. Um, you know, as a marketer, you, you really own the message. You, you, I uh, knew your, your product, you knew the channels, uh, the message as well, and the consumer was really along for the ride, uh, and you had all the control. But that's changed. Now the consumer's in control, and we know that because of two things. One, all the technology and the proliferation of devices. Um, consumers are very demanding. They want instant gratification. My CEO, uh, David Echeria, says slow is the new down. He says it all the time. You have to deliver fast, and you have to be on technology that's fast and that can host all this data. It's got to be relevant. If we just put a message out there, a mass message, they're going to ignore it and jump to the, the company that is more relevant to them. They want the best value at the best service and certainly at the lowest price. We have Amazon to thank for the free shipping and the gratuitous return policies and everything else they've done online. So as businesses, we really need to understand and deliver to our consumer. Otherwise, we're going to get leapfrogged by our competitors. And if we really want to make a difference um, and change our industries, we have to know this better than anyone else. And if we think about the proliferation of this data, the internet of things, big data, all the big buzzwords that are really important in my uh, area, um, it's that idea of we put a chip in it. The NFL has had a bunch of stories out there where they're putting chips and uniforms and, and helmets to learn a lot more uh, about what's going on and how, um, you know, what data is important and injuries and different things like that. Uh, we can't even decide or agree as analysts how much data that is. Is it 44 zettabytes or is it 400 zettabytes? Uh, a Boeing 787 puts off 40 terabytes of data in an hour of flight. I mean, there's massive amounts of data Data. This would have made Don Draper's head spin. You know, the volume and variety that's out there is way more than any marketer used to have to deal with. And today, as marketers, we have to be able to, to deal with that, which is why the heroes of marketing are no longer the Don Drapers. They're folks like Hillary Mason. Uh, why? Uh, she's a data scientist. In fact, she's the ex chief data scientist from Bitly. And she left and started her own company uh, around growth. And she actually goes out and and advises companies how to leverage and access all the data they have and build insights out of it. So I would say that um, because of all of this, just doing brand awareness isn't enough. It's how do I engage with my customer? How do I have the right data to engage with them at the right time? That's truly the secret. Well, we have to do this by reading the data tea leaves. But we know that there's so much data out there. So now I've got to be able to be a data scientist. I've got to be a technologist. And I have to be a great storyteller. I do agree you have to have that brand, all of those together. This would certainly have made Don's head spin. He wouldn't be having three martini 
lunches and today. I know that for sure. He would need Hillary Mason in his pocket to help him tell the better story so he could be out there um, getting his product in the market and purchased. So if I look about at today's growth and our hero stack, uh, this is DocuSign's a very similar one at MongoDB, uh, the change that we went through over a, a couple year period. And, and MongoDB, we did this in about six months. I mean, it's just accelerating, it's amazing. And yesterday I was at, I was in New York at our board meeting and the first thing the board asked, I didn't show this slide, but a, another one that was specific to MongoDB was, wow, how much is this costing us? You know, it is uh, amazing to see the shift of the budget into marketing. Um, but all of these are critical. We have to collect the right data so we can deliver the right message at the right time. And there's so many different channels. There's not one software right now. I love the clouds that are out there, Oracle Marketing Cloud, you've got Salesforce, you've got Adobe. They're all trying to build that platform where we can plug all of this in because this is a lot of maintenance to integrate and to tune and to get return on your investment. But we are seeing amazing things come out of these technologies that help us beat our competition, that help us with our customers, engage with them, get them into our funnel, get them through our funnel. And when we look at all the different stages, different technologies are getting people in to learn about you, to, to have you in front of them, and then accelerate them through the funnel to your sales team if you have a sales team or through the trial buying process if you're e-commerce, and then keeping them because it's a lot less expensive to keep a customer where you know than certainly to get a new one. And I think SaaS companies specifically, in the early days, it's all about getting these new logos. A majority of our revenue at DocuSign was there was a lot of the new logos. But when we looked at Salesforce, a majority of the revenue, 86% or more, came from existing existing customers and growing that base. So it's making sure we invest with our customers and we keep them and we look at retention and renewals. Uh, and if I think about how these go across the funnel, some of them go through the whole funnel. I see them more as a platform. Others are moment in time uh, solving a very specific uh, problem, but certainly important. So if we think about the expectations of these modern experience, as a marketer, not only do I need to make sure I engage with my customers a certain way and accelerate them through, but I need to make sure the product that we have in the marketplace is something that's gonna win in the long term, that's gonna win in my industry and trump my competitors, and I've gotta design it all, about, all around that customer experience because we do live in this app economy, everything we do and how we engage anymore is with our phones. I mean, I don't even go into Wells Fargo anymore. I just look at my phone, I deposit my checks, I do what I do transfers, whatever um, from that. And so it's this being connected at all times that's so important and across any device. I know at DocuSign, certainly people sign documents at their desktop when they're in work, but also they're doing it on their mobile devices, on their iPads, on their phones, even on their Apple Watches. And the other side of it is wherever you are, you want to be able to transact. A couple weeks ago, I was riding my bike to work. I live in Los Altos and uh, the office uh, MongoDB is Palo Alto, our headquarters on the West Coast. And I'm riding along at 7.30 in the morning, I'm somewhere in Palo Alto in one of the, the neighborhoods, and my phone rings, I have a basket in front, and I was like, oh, I don't wanna get my phone out, and I'm making progress. And I look at my watch, and it's our head of PR. And I'm like, oh man, she's only gonna call me at 7.30 in the morning if there's probably something I need to pay attention to. So I answered it on my phone, I'm riding my bike, and I'm talking to her, and I just had this moment of, oh my gosh, I'm riding my bike, I'm talking on the phone, I'm working, and I'm on on my way to work, I feel so efficient right now. And she asked me, are you in the car? And I said, no, I'm riding my bike. And she was like, oh my gosh, don't crash. And I was like, no, no, I'm fine, things are good. And then after I got off the phone with her, I called my husband, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm talking on my, my phone or my watch to you. And he was like, please just stop, just stop. <laughs> but it was this, you know, these moments of, we live in this world where everything's just so much more efficient and real time and, and relevant. Even had the opportunity to listen to um, Ivy Ross, who's uh, running Google Glass the whole redesign of that and how it's used and go to market and you know she was just talking about these stores that you know and some stores are already doing this but you walk in and they'll be wearing Google Glass and they'll be like oh hey Megan Eisenberg we saw you bought the you know Kate Spade skirt and we thought you might need the you know matching shoes or phone cover and they'll know right away who I am they'll sell me complimentary products they'll know what I like what I don't like um, so it's just this amazing thing that we experience even Virgin you they have a, a concierge service where as soon as you step out of your car or your Uber or 
whatever you're doing to get to the airport, they meet you there with an update on your flight, where to go, um, and they just are creating this experience, and it's all based on seeing you through glass and recognizing who you are. Um, and so this, this concept of real time, this concept of being contextually relevant, a third of Amazon's uh, revenues come from their engine that is this recommendation engine online. You know, I always try to think, how can I apply that to my business? At DocuSign, how can we, could we recommend templates for people to use to sign? You know, how can we um, learn from these others that are, are doing so well because they access the data, they collect the data, they make sense of the data, and then they apply it for their business. And I think that as, uh, as a marketer myself, um, this makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, I've quickly come to learn I've got to be a technologist or I need to partner with a technologist. And if I've got to be a data scientist, a technologist, a storyteller, um, the only way I'm going to do all of these things is if I partner. And my, you know, the first thing I did when I joined MongoDB was I hired a technologist on my team that understood how to build a database out on MongoDB, how to build a website, how to integrate and run all these amazing marketing technology platforms that are out there and integrate what we need because I need to move really fast. I needed to understand the data. I need to understand what's happening on the website, how customers are using the product. And uh, you know the, the thing from Gartner saying the budgets are going to shift from IT to marketing, it's definitely happening. I mean, look at those screens earlier when I look at all this technology. Uh, so this makes a lot of sense. If we are going to be here and, and modern and marketing, we've got to marry those two to, to be successful, and we need to partner with either our CIO in the IT division or we need to hire uh, that team internally. And so what does success look like? Well, it's all those things coming together, and it makes sense because of the trends. You know, the three big trends, we've got a lot of data, so big data. data. We have this empowered consumer, and then this partnership between marketing and technologists coming together. And so I'm going to go through a, a couple, you know, case studies of where I think people are doing a great job in this space, and they're leapfrogging clearly their competition and changing their industries. Um, Bosch, some of you may be familiar with Bosch, they're maybe your dishwasher, we have a Bosch dishwasher at home, but almost every single device they create from the home products to manufacturing, they build massive manufacturing plants and equipment. Um, they have put chips in everything, so they are the masters of internet of things, you'll see them all over the news, but they're making everything smarter, they're making manufacturing smarter, you can find your tools because they have a chip, they know how exactly, the, how tight they should do the screw on something. Um, and so the consistency and the quality of their products are improving. The ability for their manufacturing teams to find everything is improving because they're being so much smarter about it. And so they're saving costs in the long run because the products that are put out there are, are higher quality. Uh, they're efficient on the manufacturing floors. And so they're doing an amazing job in this area. And when I look at the, the customer service or even the insurance industry, which I don't always see as modern, MetLife is a great story of a company who wants to be relevant and modern and deliver a better customer service. And you know, a year or two ago, they had 70 different databases that were spread out. And if you were to call in, uh, the person, the customer support person that had to help you had to go into all these different databases to get your information. And you imagine it took forever. So it was extremely expensive to staff, and it was a horrible experience for customers. Well, they, they started to look at the different technologies out there. They wanted one view of the truth. They did a two-week pilot and had a solution up in 90 days. And the solution is what they call the wall. And they modeled it, of course, after Facebook. And it was so much easier now for support to get the right information for their customers. Uh, it was easier to ramp employees up to train uh, to, to deliver the support. And they did this by looking at what's out there, the technology, making a, a more modern approach to it. And they did it with speed. And it's true, it's that, that idea that you need to test and do it uh, speed and it has to be um, measured and, and run through. Baby monitoring, true to my heart, I have three children. My oldest is six. I have seen an evolution in this space for sure. When I started, I, I had a monitor uh, 
uh, you know, I could hear it, and then it switched to a video monitor. I could see it, but then I switched to my phone, uh, and it took forever to set it up on the phone. Uh, and I, I have to admit, my husband set it up, and we used an Apple one, and then we tried another one, and then finally this thing called DropCam came out. And we put DropCam in, and it was amazing, and I use it today. It's now bought by Nest, and I can see everything. But this monitoring and this evolution that's gone on has made it so much easier because it's hard to be a parent. And when it's your first child, you're freaking out. And this is really like the Fitbit for babies. You think they're not breathing, but this will tell you they're breathing. This will tell you, this even tells you their mood. It tells you the way they like to sleep. It tells you when they're about to wake up. I mean, it's pretty impressive the stats you can get on your baby now. I need one for myself. Like, oh my goodness, should I sleep this way? Should I sleep that way? Um, but it's cool. I like uh, what Sproutling's done. And then investing. Charles Schwab's done some amazing stuff in this space. You know, we think about this instant gratification. In less than five minutes, you can rebalance your portfolio or sign up for this. Less time it takes to go get a coffee at Phil's. You can get like, you can set four accounts up by the time you get coffee from Phil's on this. I mean, it's that much faster. It takes out the middleman. It sort of democratizes uh, your ability to finance uh, and, and do investment. And so I think they've done a great job in that space. Seamless, out here, I, this is, we, we, our other headquarters in New York. Uh, I, I'm out here, I'm on DoorDash, love it. I love the experience now versus having to go find a pizza thing, call in, get my credit card out, you know, not know when it's gonna come. It's so much better. They've taken this industry and once a week, at a minimum, I go on and order something through DoorDash and I can order from two different restaurants because my four-year-old refuses to eat anything except French fries and fried chicken and, and, and whatnot and everyone else doesn't want to eat that. And so I can order different things, it all comes at once. I get a text message, hey, the person's at the door, I go to the door, I get it, I don't have to worry about money. I mean, I love, I love, love, love what companies are doing. Uh, even United uh, or Aer Lingus, they've done a much better job, I think, on their apps, building on these new technologies, making sure I can see if I'm gonna get upgraded, if there's Wi-Fi, if my flight's delayed. Uh, also, in their ability for their industry for discounted seating. And so they've done a better job to try and uh, get more profitable uh, through these sort of apps. And my last example I love, I think dating has gone through a renaissance, certainly since I've been married 10 years. Um, I uh, did not get to experience uh, Match or any of the others, but if we, we come through Harmony and all of those, but even now Tinder and Grindr, I mean, it's geospatial things. I read these articles and I'm, I have three daughters, so I'm worried if this is what dating's like now, what's it gonna be like hopefully 25 years from now um, for them. But I mean, look at this guy. He's like, I won't murder you. I hope not, <laughs> right? That's his profile. But because we have access to all this data, we are you know, accelerating these experiences in our lives and making our lives easier, a custom, better customer experience, a better way to find a mate. Um, it's, it's all, I think, interesting and intriguing. But what these companies have done is they've figured out that customer experience. They've leveraged data. They've looked at the insights on it, they've leveraged technology, and they have leapfrogged not only their competitors, but they've really transformed their industries. Uh, I was fortunate enough to talk with Kevin Ryan, he's on our, our board, and he was talking a little bit about this idea of making a better customer experience. Look how many companies took Craigslist. I mean, I, I've used Craigslist, I don't really use it anymore, but I used to use it uh, back then. Look at Airbnb. You could just take a category in Craigslist and then go make a product out of it and have this amazing company. You know, Airbnb made it so much easier to list a property or to rent or, or to find something. Uh, look at care.com. Uh, they've done a great job look at looking for help. And I think Urban Sitter has even done better, which I just discovered Urban Sitter for those people, folks, parents looking for an easy sitter that's vetted by your social network. It is amazing. I never have to worry about a, a vetted babysitter again. Uh, go check that out. So all of these just being super important. And other things they have in common is looking at all this data, the algorithms, real-time architecture. This, if you're a marketer and you don't have a technology background, you need to marry a technologist. You need to go find that CIO or the IT team or get the headcount uh, within your team so that you can do amazing things and deliver amazing customer experience before your competitor does it. Hopefully you've been inspired uh, to go back and, and deliver a much better experience, uh, or at least to talk with your technologist. Really appreciate the time today uh, and enjoy lunch.